Hello Commanders and welcome to this video for Infinite Lagrange. Today will be a video about battles, so I want to go into some quick basics, um, explaining you the rows, target priorities, fleet setups, very very briefly I'll have a separate video for more detailed fleet setups, um, then losses and returns as well as XP and battle reports. Now. Every time we want to attack something, there are a few steps we have to take. First, we have to find our target. So let's say this level 5 enemy here. Then we have to set up our fleet. Now you can do a fleet lineup if you already have something um, set up. Very early in game, very likely you will just select all because um, that's everything you have. Make sure all your ships are repaired. You still can repair them in the screen. And um, then I will have a fleet set up. Now I can create that fleet. What do we have to look at in the screen? I know many players, same as me at the beginning, were just quickly clicking confirm, but there's so much here. First you can select the route and this can be very important. You see the time down here changes, but sometimes the automatic selection of the route will bring your fleet through enemy territory or somewhere else, or you might attack someone on the way. So check that. Second, the auto return. Um, most of the time, very likely you want auto return turned off. That means your fleet will stay at this position when the fight is over. Action points are always nice. We will have a look at this at the end of the fight. And then many people think that's it, but no, this is not. Um, you also have the storage capacity on the right. And this is a very important point. When you click on that storage symbol, you can take prefab modules with you. And they will allow you to repair your fleet after the fight in space. You will have to pay with coins and these prefab modules. It requires storage capacity. So if you lose half of your fleet and therefore half of your storage capacity, you might lose some of the prefab modules. Therefore, um, first of all, always make sure that you win a fight with zero to as low losses as possible and second don't take too many prefab modules if you don't really need them and then you can already Setting click out. confirm and your fleet will go to that enemy now i said i also want to go through the rows um i do have a fleet setup here only frigates which works perfectly well and in this setup i do have um carillions and the carillion special type now this is where the rows come into play. The Carillion special type is a front row ship, meaning most of the time the enemy will first fire on the front row before they will fire on other ships. I do also have the Xeno Stinger, this is my damage ship and this is a back row ship, therefore it will most of the time, it's not always, it's not 100%, but most of the time it will not be fired first at they will first fire at the front row and the middle row. Now the other thing I mentioned is target priority. If we take a look at um, let's say the ruby um, and the main weapon system of the ruby and we click on that weapon system and then on this information we see this one will target destroyers first then frigates and then it will start targeting big ships. This can be or is different for each weapon type, especially if we take a look into um, the bigger ships like um, cruisers and battle cruisers. Constantine the Great, very good example. We got the main system here. If we check this, this will target first the big ships, carriers, battle cruisers, cruisers. After this, there's no priority anymore, so it will just take whatever is there in the front row. What does target priority mean? It means it will scan the front row and check if there's one ship of its priority. If there is, it will attack this. If not, it will start searching for this kind of ship. And... Um, it will help you to understand this because if you have to set up your um, fleet, you want to have something in the front row for each of these priorities later in game. So here we have the other target priority, destroyers, frigates, carriers, battle cruisers. So if you don't have a destroyer or a frigate in the front row, 
but you have a battle cruiser in the front row. It will go for that battle cruiser, but if you have a battle cruiser and a destroyer in the front row, it will first target that destroyer. So that's for the target priority. Now for the setup, I did already explain, I do have a front row ship, I do have a back row ship, so I always try to have something tanky in the front row. In my case, I do have the Carillion in the front row. Other very good ships, um, everyone got the uh, FG300, the armored type has a higher armor and same thing, it is a front row ship, so it's a perfect role as a tank. We don't have really tanks here, we don't have a town or something like this, but we do have the rows and we do have ships that are in the front and have higher armor or higher evade. So these are usually the ships we want to have as tanks. Um, then there's usually the damage dealing ship. And the last, what I have now here is a Noma support type. This comes with repair UAVs, meaning it can repair my ships while we are in the fight. So that's the basics for the setup. And I perfectly covered the time to reach this enemy. Now, I will switch over to another fight that I did. Um, same thing, just a level 6 pirate, same setup, but I think level 6 is a little bit more interesting. So let's go into this fight and have a look. Our fleet is just arriving at the enemy. That is perfect. Now, when it comes to the fight, you always should observe what's going on there especially when it's the first time you attack this level of pirates or if it might be a different setup just to ensure that you do not lose um, your ships if it's not pvp or even in pvp i would always recommend you to look for zero to nearly zero losses everything you lose costs you resources and time resources and time are expensive it's your um, early in game it's your most important thing to handle your resources very carefully now later in game when your base is fully built you can start wasting resources for me as you can see here i do have a very solid setup so i should run with nearly no losses now what information do we get here we can see the setup of the fleet um, I usually check the enemy fleet, how fast is it going down, what is going down, I check my own fleet. If I see that my own fleet is starting to lose, and that's very important, you have to go out of the fight, you click your fleet, and then you can retreat it. I didn't find any way to do this from inside the fight, only from outside. So if that happens, retreat your fleet. Um, you will not lose any ships by retreating. Ships that already got destroyed, sure, they will stay destroyed, but besides that, there's no additional disadvantage. So whenever you get the chance and you see the fight is not running in your favor, in my case, the fight is running really well, so no problem here. But if you see the fight is not running in your favor, retreat, retreat your fleet, um, build some more ships, get some better setup, and then try it again. Or even ask a friend to support you. You can always attack one enemy with multiple fleets. So if there's someone from your union close by and you need to clean up that pirate base, just ask them to join in. This will also reduce your losses because you will be able to kill the enemy faster. Now, what else do we have here? There's not really much. We do get the battle reports as soon as the fight is over and um, we get XP. So XP is one of the very important things here. I did already kill one before. Um, the battle results show you. Um, you can only get experience points for ships you own. You saw in the setup there's a Boreas a missile destroyer, but this is not mine. This is an extra blueprint that I gathered. You cannot gather these in all um, types of servers, only in certain types. Um, you can also buy these TE versions from trading posts, but you cannot level them up, so they don't get experience points and you can't level them up. You can also check the battle stats for the damage. As you can see, most of my damage, anti-ship damage, came from the Xeno Stingers. Um, here you can also click on them, then you see where they did 
what kind of damage you can see the systems that got destroyed so they don't do any system damage i don't have i think any ships that can do system damage at the moment here um, you can also do the same thing here in the main screen in the detail screen um, what else can we do we can see the hp change here we see that the noma is working very well keeping my fleet up and then the total battery results where we do see what we got so now especially the battle stats are important to check sometimes as you can see here my one boreas um, is only doing 10k damage while my 10 xenos are doing 13k so that means 138k that means 13k per ship but the big difference is the boreas does need 10 command points while the xeno only needs six so in a command points versus damage the xeno is doing much better now if you did take some repair modules with you you can go so you see i got the prefab modules you can go into the few after you can see the ship list and you will be able to repair your ships you will see this costs you the modules and it does cost you some coins unfortunately i don't have enough here but i wanted to show you this option also you can look for damaged ships and you got the symbol here this only is after the fight the symbol is not existing during the fight and you can select which ship you want to send home so if a carillion is already very badly damaged i will very likely send it home if my fleet beside that is still usable I will continue using it and do attack the next enemy. This way I do see it save time. If I can even connect two operations close to each other, I will be able to have lower re um, action point cost. So this is 20. If I now add one additional operation in between here, making this one big operation and now do the attack, you can see it only costs me 10 action points. So that's it that's an overview for the battle what to look at the basics how it works the battle reports i hope you liked the video gave you a good idea um, how battles work or how you can prepare for them what you can do there are more details you might want to learn there are many many more videos not only from me also from other players if you have questions send them in the comment and as always do like the video, um, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and then I'll see you on the next video again.